Disclaimer, the Epstein drive is a hybrid fusion, plasma, ion drive. This video is not about how a fusion drive, plasm drive, or ion rocket drive works instead this video is a focus on the specific design choice of continuous burn for sustain acceleration to simulates 1G. The distance from the Sun which defines the center of our solar system to Pluto which defines the edge of our solar system is defined as having a radius of 4.545 billion km. This is the number that I will be using to determine how the Epstein drive from the Expanse universe works. To generate artificial gravity the Epstein is designed to continuously burn to sustain a continuous acceleration. Acceleration is a rate of change in speed over time which results in an increase in magnitude. Whereas deceleration is a rate of change in speed over time which results in a decrease in magnitude. I'm starting with the distance of the solar system to define the key constraint of the drive's primary design function. Most conventional rockets which is the primary real propulsion system for space travel. Reach their maximum speed then power down. In this way the craft continues under power until it reaches its destination. The Epstein drive is unique in that it's as described as continuously burning or using fuel and remaining under power for the duration of the trip. This is done to simulate a force of 1G through the use of acceleration. To simplify object do not accelerate or decelerate at the same time. Any object under power will accelerate or decelerate independent of any other object which is not under power. When an object under power accelerate into another independent object which can not move out of the way. The independent object experiences inertial forces as it try to remain at rest. These forces are calculate as G-forces. The natural force of mass attraction of the Earth which we use to measure the different density of matter on the Earth is defined as roughly 9.8 meter per second. Every second the surface of the Earth experiences a downward force of 9.8 meters. We describe this as gravity. If you pick up any real physical object and release it, it will move toward the center of the Earth in a straight line and come to rest when it collides with another independent object to include the surface of the Earth itself. This object is still physically in motion toward the center of the Earth although it appears to be at rest. We call this fundamental understanding relativity. Relativity is the reasoning that object in motion do not know that they are in motion unless they can check their potential and kinetic energy against another object within its proximity. I could continue with this line of reasoning for a long while but instead any question you have may be left in the comments section. We know the distance of the solar system we the speed of acceleration required to generate a force to simulate 1G of mass attraction. What we don't know is how the Epstein drive does this of if it's even physically possible. If we take the radius of the solar system 316 billion times it by 1.6 to get kilometers we are left with a result of 505 billion 600 million kilometers. But this need to be converted into meters to match mass attractions. So we add three zeros. 505 trillion 600 billion meters. Now that we have our figure we need to divide 505 trillion 600 billion by 9.8 to get the total number of seconds. Why? We need to simulate the force of gravity. We are not currently focused on speed just simulated the kind of acceleration required to simulate a force of 1G 51 trillion 591 billion 836 million 734,693.877 so I will just round this up to 51 trillion 591 billion 836 million 734,694 meter per second. This values is the number of spaces you will travel to generate a force of 1G while accelerated each unit is equal to a distance of 9.8 meters. This is our meter per second. When dealing with acceleration there are distance value and a time value. You can travel across the solar system in one day to do this you divide 505 billion 600 million by 24 to get 21 billion 66 million 666 thousand 666 point six this value is speed kilometers per hour. Anyway. To better understand what 51 trillion 591 billion 836 million 734,694 meter per second implies we need to divide by units of time. Minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, ECT, and convert meter back to kilometers. 
total travel time in second 51 trillion 591 billion 836 million 734 thousand 694 minutes 859 billion 863 million 945 thousand 578 point two three three Hours 14,331,065,759.637 Days 597,127,739.984 Weeks 85,303,962.854 Months 21,325,990.713 Years 1,777,165.892 In conclusion the Epstein drive will be so slow as it would require a total trip time of 1,777,166 years to leave the solar system. No my math is not wrong. A car traveling at 60 miles per hour does not take one hour to accelerate. A car accelerates to its maximum speed in a short amount of time which is what causes inertial g-forces. If a car accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 10 seconds which is super slow, it would gain 6 miles per hour of speed every second. The Epstein drive is reaching a velocity. Once it reaches the edge of the solar system a total speed of 35,280. Kilometer per hour will be reached and it would take 505,600,000,000 kilometers and another 1,777,166 years after a flip burn to decelerate and come to a complete stop. Base exclusively on sustaining a LG acceleration. In the book and on the show it's easy to see that the Epstein drive can reach forces close to 20 times the force of Earth's gravity. So it's safe to imply that the Epstein drive have sufficient overall power. Measured speed of the Epstein drive. For 1G acceleration with flip maneuver in the middle you are in the range below 16 days for any single planet in the system and under 3 weeks when you are traveling max distances like when Neptune is on the opposite side of the system to Uranus. Epstein drive is within the reach of fusion-powered rockets. The moon closest to Earth. 356,577 km travel time, at 9.80665 m s2, decelerating halfway 3 hours 20 minutes and 24 seconds. Mercury, closest to Earth, 77.3 million km travel time, 2d 1 hour 19 minutes and 12 seconds. Venus, closest to Earth, 40 million km travel time. 1d 11 hours 28 minutes and 48 seconds. Mars, closest to Earth, 65 million km travel time, 1d 21 hours 13 minutes and 1 second. Jupiter, closest to Earth, 588 million km travel time, 5d 16 hours 2 minutes and 2 seconds. Saturn, closest to Earth, 1.2 billion km travel time, 82 hours 20 minutes and 24 seconds. Uranus, closest to Earth, 2.57 billion km travel time, 1 1d 20 hours 24 minutes and 0 seconds. Neptune, closest to Earth, 4.3 billion km travel time, 1 5d 7 hours 52 minutes and 48 seconds. Pluto, closest to Earth. 4.28 billion km travel time 15d7 hours 1 minute and 12 seconds. Leaving Earth to Moon 12,024 seconds 1,779.326 kmh. Mercury 177,552 seconds 261,219.248 kmh. Venus 127,728 seconds 18,789.928 kmh. Mars 162,781 seconds 23,958.570 kmh. Jupiter 489,722 seconds 72,040.872 kmh. Saturn 57,097,440 seconds 1,261.002 kmh. 
Neptune 77,788,368 seconds 3,316.691 3 kmh. Pluto 77,785,272 seconds 3,301.396 kmh. Conclusion Based on my research and with all the data that I have provided the Epstein drive works by having a primary main drive and a secondary efficiency drive. The efficiency drive when powered provides a continuous thrust that generates an inertial force of between 1 3rd grams to 1 g. The primary drive is used to get a ship up to speed. What I'm attempting to convey can be illustrated by assigning some imaginary attributes to a custom ship from the expanse using a custom Epstein drive. The ship has a max speed of x and a max range of y. The ship's primary drive has a max acceleration, and its secondary efficient drive has a constant acceleration. If we remember conventional combustion rockets travel under power until they reach escape vector out of Earth's gravitation influence. They the travel unpowered at a constant maximum speed until they arrive at their destination. The same hold true for the Epstein primary drive system. Only the Epstein secondary efficient drive system operates under continuous powered. What need to be understood about the Epstein primary drive is that it is designed to function at human tolerances. In the expanse we see the stress of zero momentum acceleration. And the term hard burn acceleration is used quite often. This describes the function of the primary drive system. If our imaginary ship leaves Earth and head to Mars with a max range of Neptune. It has both the speed and the fuel capacity to arrive at Mars within a specific time frame. To keep this simple we will say that at its max burn it would take one day or 24 hours for our imaginary ship to make the journey. If we take 65 million kilometers then divide it in half to account for a flip burn. 32,500,000 kilometers we are given the range for a full burn of the secondary efficient drive. This keep the vehicle under constant acceleration to generate one third grams to one gram of inertial force. We know that the ship is going to travel 65 million kilometers in 24 hours so we can divide 65 million kilometers by 24 to get its rate of acceleration per hour. Which equals 2,708,333.333 kmh but this is not accurate. If we take the literal description of ship travel in the then. One half of the trip has to be done as a declaration. We shouldn't have to recalculate any values. We can assume that the average rate of 2,708,333.333 kmh is sustained for 12 hours and that the braking velocity will equal 2,708,333.333 kmh per hour as well. But what if the crew are not in any kind of hurry and they decide to travel from Earth to Mars in 2 days or 48 hours? This is where the fundamental comprehension of the Epstein drive come into clarity. For this trip the secondary efficiency drive will still keep the vehicle under constant acceleration to generate 1 third grams to 1 f of inertial forces but what changes is as follows. We know that the ship is going to travel 65 million kilometers in 48 hours so we can divide 65 million kilometers by 48 to get its rate of acceleration per hour. Which equals 1,354,166.666 kmh the same as before will still apply the ship will travel at this rate for an average of 24 hours. Now the halfway mark takes twice as long to reach the overall acceleration of the ship's primary drive is much slower. But the efficiency drive remains constant. After 24 hours of travel time the halfway point of 32,500,000 km is reached and the ship performs its flip burn then decelerates for another 24 hours at a rate of 1,354,166.666 kmh arriving at Mars in a total travel time of 48 hours. The same math would apply for a ship that has a maximum speed of 12 hour from Earth to Mars. Like with a conventional rocket the Epstein drive uses fusion power and its high specific impulse to reach a specific maximum speed to complete a journey in a set amount of time. Safely accelerating to reach that speed so as to not overstress the ship or its crew. Once the speed is reached the primary drive shuts down like a conventional rocket would leaving only the secondary efficiency drive under power, which at acceleration required to sustain the inertial frame of 1G. 
Flip burns deactivate the secondary efficiency drive leaving only the primary drive online to decelerate the ship safely so that it arrive at its destination within its schedule window. This application and functionality accounts for intercept vectors. If it take the same amount of time for a ship to decelerate as it does for a ship to accelerate. In other words if a ship traveling for one hour requires one hour to decelerate. Then ship which are not scheduled to rendezvous with each other would never be able to do so. Instead a hard or fast burn of the primary drive can bring a ship to a stop with an extreme deceleration. This is true for the Razorback ship in the Expanse. It's possessed the ability to accelerate and decelerate without preforming flip burns. But the inertial frames within the ship were extreme. I could further this line or reasoning and continue to rant but I would only digress from the focus of the topic. Thank you for watching if you have any further question please leave them in the comment section below.